Welcome to the Daily Tanya. Today is Wednesday, the ninth day of Nisan. Let's begin with Tzedakah. Gedoyla, Tzedakah, Shemekah Reves, Esar Geula. Tzedakah brings Mashiach closer. And today we are concluding chapter 40 in the Tanya. We spoke the last few days about the love and fear of Hashem. That this helps us, it's considered like wings that helps us fly. Fly that the mitzvah should soar up and reach up in the higher levels. And the Alter Rebbe said yesterday we are that the, the love and fear of Hashem are like the wings of a bird. Just like in a bird. What is the main part of the bird? That's the body of the bird. The bird without the wings. The wings are very crucial for the bird. It needs it to fly. But the bird can live without the wings. And the wings without the bird, without the body of the bird, is worth nothing. But the, but the body of the bird without the wings, at least it can live. The same thing as the Torah mitzvahs. The Torah mitzvahs are like the body. And the wings is like the love and the fear is like the wings that help the mitzvahs to rise up high. So, so the Alter Rebbe now wants to clarify this. He poses a question. He says, we just said that the love and fear are just serving the mitzvahs, but isn't love of Hashem and fear of Hashem part of the mitzvahs themselves? There is the mitzvahs clearly in the Torah. It says you should love God. There's a says in the Torah, you should fear your God. So how could you say that this is only serving the mitzvahs? That itself is a mitzvah. And Alter Rebbe is going to explain that although, yes, it is part of the 613 mitzvahs to love God and fear God, but nevertheless, that mitzvah has a goal. The mitzvah, the goal is not just to love Hashem, not just to develop a a quench, to develop a thirst to Hashem. The point of that mitzvah is that it should lead you somewhere. That this thirst that you have to God should lead you to actually fulfill God's will. So that's a, a kind of a mitzvah. It is part of the mitzvahs, but yet this mitzvah has its purpose. And the purpose is that it should lead you to serve Hashem. And then it's going to explain that there is two types of love. There is one type of love that is just a thirst and there is other, another type of love that is actually a goal for itself and that we'll explain in a minute so let's begin with inside what the Alter Rebbe says says the Alter Rebbe and Gamken Mitayag Mitzvah, although fear and love are also among the 613 mitzvahs, Afal Pikein Nikroim Gatfin. They are nevertheless described as mere wings for other mitzvahs, that they are rising, bringing up the other mitzvahs. And why is that? The Yeskitachlis. Because the goal of love is the service of God resulting from this love. The goal of love is not the love itself, not just to love Hashem. Not just to have the thirst to Hashem, to godliness. Its purpose lies not in itself, but in its role as a motivation for serving God via the mitzvahs. For this reason, it is likened to wings, which are secondary to the bird itself. However, the Alter Rebbe is going to explain there is one type of love that is a goal for itself. To explain this in short, there are two types of love of Hashem. 
There's a love of Hashem that is a kind of a thirst, something that you don't have, you want to achieve. And then there's a love of Hashem, and it's called a love of delight, something, a love that you just enjoy what you have. To understand it in, in uh, using a metaphor, it is like the love that you have for a spouse or when you find someone that you fall in love with and you, and the feeling that you have is a feeling of trying to get you want to get what you like what you love you want to get close to the person and so on and then there's another type of love a love of delight a love of something that you have you enjoy your children you enjoy your grandchildren or like um, like for example if you miss if you're not with uh, you don't see you didn't see your parents in a long time and you love your parents and you want to see them so that love is a love of thirst but once you have them it's a love of delight you're enjoying them enjoying the presence so the same thing is when we're talking about the love of Hashem, there's a love that is called a love that is a thirst. And you, try, you, you appreciate godliness and you want to get closer and you want to achieve a, a closeness to God. And that is the love that is supposed to help you to quench that thirst. How? By doing mitzvahs, studying Torah. But then there is a, a higher level of love. It's called the love and the light. And that is something that is a futuristic love. In the time of Mashiach, when the, we'll see the godliness will be revealed and we'll have that godliness with us. There are certain tzaddikim, very few righteous people who are able to achieve, to achieve that kind of love even today even during the lifetime. That's a very special, unique case. But normally, this is not something that we have now. Now we have this, we have to try to get the love, fear of Hashem, and love of Hashem is the kind of love that is a thirst to Hashem. So that's what the Alter Rebbe continues here. And he says, Love without service, meaning a love that is not a means to an end, but an end in itself. This is a love which experiences the light, a supremely high level of love in which one delights in godliness. And that is, this is in the nature of the world to come and thus constitutes reward. Meaning such love for God is actually a foretaste and part of the reward to be given in the world to come. It does not in itself represent service of God. What we have today is, as the Torah says, but it is written today to do them. Meaning today, this life is the time, in the time of action and service. And tomorrow in the world to come to receive their rewards. So this, in this life, a time of service the love that leads to the service is the love love most prized that's the love we need to have the love that leads us to do the torah and mitzvahs now the Alter Rebbe continues and concludes this chapter and it says like this if someone did not reach the level of reaching the love of delight but he has the love of thirst. He wants. To, he wants to. He's thirsting for godliness. But he doesn't go and study Torah. He doesn't go and do mitzvahs. So he says that the Rebbe. This is compared to a person who is 
standing in front of a body of fresh water and is crying, I'm thirsty. If you're standing in front of a body of water, why don't you drink the water? So he says here, obviously, when a person's crying is thirsty, instead of drinking the water, that means he enjoys being thirsty. He enjoys that concept of being thirsty. Or at least he has something about this thirst that he feel uh, is crying, I'm thirsty, I'm thirsty. And he doesn't drink the water. So in 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 reference to the uh, love to Hashem, Al Rebbe brings what it says, Let's see it in a minute, but read until then. So it says like this, He, however, who has not attained this level of savoring uh, a foretaste of the world to come, and has not reached the level of, of, of a love which experiences the light, but whose soul yet yearns and thirsts for God and goes out to Him all day long. And he does not quench his thirst for godliness with the waters of Torah that is in front of him. Such a person is comparable to one who stands in a river and cries, water, water to drink. Thus the prophet laments over him, Ho, oh, all you who thirst, go to the waters. On which our sages comments that water refers to Taira. Now, what exactly is the prophet saying? He's saying, if you're thirsty, oh, all oh, those, all oh, those who are thirsty, the prophet Isaiah says, those who are thirsty, go to water. Is that such a profound statement? If you're thirsty, go to water. Of course, every child knows that. And even if you're saying it talks about thirst for Torah. It says the water is compared to Torah. And the prophet is saying, if you're thirsty, go to study Torah. So, again, the same question. If a person is thirsty for Torah, you give him such a brilliant advice and telling him, oh, yes, go. If you're thirsty for Torah, go study Torah. Okay. Everybody knows that. So the Alter Rebbe says, no. There's, is a, the meaning is different. What the, the prophet is saying to the person who is thirsty, is thirsty for what? Is thirsty for godliness. And he enjoys being thirsty for godliness. You, sometimes you have this feeling of thirst for Hashem and you enjoy that part. You enjoy feeling wanting something greater. And here the, the, the prophet is saying, that's not the goal. The goal is not to stand in that state of mind just to be thirsty for something spiritual. That thirst is supposed to lead you to quench your thirst. How? With studying Torah. How? With doing the mitzvahs. Because that is really what quenches the thirst of the soul. So that's what Al Tarabe is saying. Kilifip shuta and moving for in its simple meaning, the verse is incomprehensible. The Mishut Sama Yimisave Lilma Pshita Shailma Miatsma. He who is thirsty and desires to study will surely do so of its own accord. Velomaloina Navi Litzik Olav Hoy. Why must the Prophet cry over him ho? Clearly then. The verse refers to one who loves God and thirsts for Him. And the purpose is that what the prophet is telling him, that's not where you should stop. You thirst for God, that's beautiful. You want God, that's beautiful. Take it to the next step. Quench that thirst by studying Torah and doing mitzvahs. 
Now, if love of God were an end of, of itself, the service of prayer could suffice, for it creates a love and thirst for God. But because the purpose of love is that it leads one to serve God, the prophet exhorts us to, not to rest content with love itself, but to study Torah and thereby quench the thirst for godliness and also realize the purpose of love. This matter is discussed elsewhere at length, and this is the end of this chapter, which we actually is the end of a number of chapters where we discussed about what the mitzvah is important, the, the feelings is important, and we understand that both are important, but bottom line is, number one is to do the mitzvah, and number two, make sure that the mitzvah has feelings with it. And when you have a feeling of thirst, don't stay in that status of thirst to Hashem and enjoy that spiritual status, but quench that thirst with doing Torah, with doing mitzvahs. Have a wonderful day. Let's Hashem. We'll see you tomorrow, starting the new chapter, chapter 41.